Number 26, the function f is defined by f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are constants. The graph of y equals f of x in the xy plane passes through the points 7, 0, and negative 3, 0. If a is an integer greater than 1, which of the following could be the value of a plus b? This is one of those sort of word salad problems that I think a lot of people start going, what? Because it's not like anything you've seen in your math book, most likely. Right, so f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. That is a parabola. And, you know, parabola can be a lot of things. We don't know what a, b, and c are, so it can be any of those. But we know basically the type of shape that a parabola is, right? And we're told that the graph of this function passes through the points 7, 0, and negative 3, 0. And I am not drawing this to scale. I'm just doing this to kind of, for myself, when I'm writing this, this is what I do. I'm like, okay, give me an idea of what's going on. I'm not going to take the time during the SAT to make a scale drawing. And so negative 3, 0, and 7, 0. And the parabola passes through them. So this parabola could be going up and coming down. Or, there we go, or it could be, oh goodness, this whiteboard, or it could be going down and coming up. Either way, but it's going through these two points. These are its x-intercepts. When you know the x-intercepts, you know the zeros of it. So think about when we're factoring. If I had, say, in a different problem, let's say I had, you know, I factored something and I got it down to x minus 2, and x minus 3. I go, okay, I'm going to solve for x. So I split up x minus 2 equals 0, x minus 3 equals 0. I do my math. I figure out that x is 2 and x is 3. If I were to graph that, that parabola is going to go through the points 2, 0, and 3, 0. It just is. The zeros, where they solve, they are, those are the x-intercepts. So let's go backwards. If the x-intercepts of 2 and 3 came from x minus 2 and x minus 3, well, here we have our x-intercepts of negative 3 and 7. So what would this factored thing look like? Well, it was the opposite, remember, because x if it was 2, it was x minus 2. 3, it was x minus 3. So I know that this parabola, if it was factored, could be x minus plus 3 times x minus 7. Now, I want to get this into a form of ax squared plus bx plus c, so I'm going to distribute it. All right, so x times x is x squared. x times negative 7 is negative 7x. 3 times x is 3x. And 3 times negative 7 is negative 21. I'm going to combine those in the middle, and I get x squared minus 4x minus 21. And that, my friends, is a function that absolutely would work for this at first glance. Why do I say that? Because they've thrown a wrinkle into this. Because if you just glanced back at this point and said, what's the value of a plus b? You go, all right, a is 1 b is negative 4, add those together, negative 3, ah, b is my answer. No, no, it's not. Why? Why isn't it? Because of this right here. It says if a is an integer greater than 1, ah, there we go, here, that integer, that invisible 1, ah, has to be greater than 1. So what's an integer greater than 1? What's the next one up? That'd be 2. So to change this to 2, I need to multiply this whole thing by 2, which would give me 2x squared minus 8x minus 42. Then when I added a and b, 2 plus negative 8 would be negative 6. And that is an option here. It is a. Another way you could look at this is when we had our first initial where we said 1 and negative 4, and you add them together, 1 plus negative 4 being negative 3, all of the possible values of a plus b would have to be a multiple of negative 3 because it's going to be multiplied by an integer greater than 1. So what you could do then at that point, instead of you know trying 2, 
and then hey in this case particularly it worked multiplying by two got us to negative six which was an answer but they might not always be that kind and I don't want you trying a whole bunch of integers <laughs> in that case so here we knew that it was negative three a plus b being negative three so we would look over here and see are any of these uh, multiples of negative three and or does negative three go into any of them cleanly and sure enough a it does so a negative six is the answer hey guys just a quick heads up i've got some cool stuff coming for y'all including a free course full of sat tips and tricks as well as an exhaustively complete course on everything you need to know for the sat both math and reading so subscribe to the channel to get notified when that goes live i'm also going to put it in the comments and description below as soon as it does in the meantime if this video was helpful or useful in any way please let youtube know comment like share subscribe you know the drill thank you so much for stopping by hope you have a great day see you later bye